Thank you. And this will be Senator Hessen. Uh, thank you, Chair Cassidy, and I thank you and the ranking member for this hearing. I thank our panelists for being here today, for sharing your expertise. But before um, I ask you some questions, I do want to note, uh, as important as this topic is, um, and as grateful for the expertise of this panel as I am, this is the ninth day of our government shutdown here. And this committee has an important topic before us, but we should be focused on a bipartisan path to reopen the government and prevent health insurance premiums from doubling uh, and people, millions of people losing their health insurance in this country as a result. So I'm gonna continue uh, to focus my attention on that. I hope uh, we can come together as colleagues and do both things. They're not mutually exclusive. Reopen the government and address a, a narrowing window we're days away from people getting their notices of doubling premiums and the damage that that will do to our healthcare system uh, and to the people who work in our healthcare system and the people who need care is real. Uh, so with that, Dr. Altman, I wanna start with a question to you. AI companies have made clear that advanced AI systems can be misused by bad actors to help create dangerous new pathogens. For example, OpenAI recently announced the current chat GPT systems are highly capable of biological research, including research into potential biological weapons. Congress must support American innovation in AI while also stopping terrorists from using AI to threaten our national security. What kinds of biosecurity risks are posed by advanced AI systems, and how can the bioresearch industry help us address those risks? Thank you, Senator, for that question. You're absolutely right that, um, especially in the setting of open source tools, there's a possibility for bad actors to design pathogens, and I, I stress the word design. Design pathogens, design toxic molecules, design things that are, could be meant for uh, mass uh, casualty events. Um, the good news is there is a moment where they have to take that design and they have to send it to a lab to actually make the pathogen, make the molecule, and that is a critical opportunity. There's other opportunities. This is not the only one, right. but the critical moment when they send this to a company, perhaps unlabeled, hoping that it's going to make it through the uh, system and that they'll get back whatever it is that they've designed. And so um, in February of this year, we had a, a conference on biosecurity uh, and AI, and we outlined a set of mitigation tasks that you could put in place, not, not one of which solves the problem, but it, as a package, they give some assurance that we're tr stopping the bad guys. And AI is part of that package. So I'll just ra rapidly say that tiered access, certain data should be absolutely open, and then there's a spectrum to data that really you need to have a good reason to have access to that data. The, the models can be turned to, to, trained to audit their use, and if they see a series of questions that are troublesome or worrisome, they can flag that. You can have guardrails using AI technology to do watermarks on outputs so you can trace who asked this yep. question and where they, and so there's a series of things that we outlined. And so I'm optimistic that in terms of mo a package of mitigations, we can reduce that risk, but we must re remain vigilant because it's never a solved problem. I appreciate that and we'll follow up with you. Um, Ms. Pearson, current AI systems can write computer code with expert level skill. Cyber criminals can exploit this code writing ability of AI systems to design and launch new kinds of cyber attacks, such as cyber attacks against our critical infrastructure. How can we improve information sharing between the federal government and private sector to counter emerging cybersecurity threats from AI written code? Um, I Thank you for that question. It's an important area. Cybersecurity um, has kept me up at night for a long time, and I know it's an important area for many of you. Um, when we were, uh, when I was uh, head of cyber division at the New York Department of Financial Services, I think it was the first piece of guidance in the financial services industry around the state level around cybersecurity that we created um, uh, and then was issued subsequent to my departure. And it uh, really put the issue on the radar screen for that industry to say, you need to have strategies, you need to assess risks. So that's the first start, is to um, expect particularly high-risk industries that are already regulated, like financial services, to have a plan and to incorporate that. Information sharing has been underway for years. It is an important ingredient between the government and industry. Um, CISA, uh, the Cybersecurity Information Security Act, uh, those aspects of it have lapsed. Um, I think 
it, uh, there's a debate about whether they were uh, essential. I think it, they're helpful uh, provisions, reauthorizing them, bringing them back, I think would be a good baseline step to take. But fundamentally, uh, there's already robust uh, information sharing, and um, it should continue. Uh, but cybersecurity, cyber again, is uh, a little bit of a technology-neutral aspect if you're just focusing on the actions you need to take to assess risk and, and use AI right. in defense of what the criminals are using AI, and, um, and that war is escalating. Well, thank you. And Mr. Chair, I appreciate that I'm over. I'll just say there are a number of us on this committee who also sit on his GAC Homeland Security Committee, and, and we have some work to do in this area. And lastly, um, as a proud member of Red Sox Nation, um, I will follow up with you, uh, Mr. Aramayo, about um, the importance to the workers uh, at Fenway, not just the uh, customers and the fans who come to Fenway of that personal interaction. Thank you. Two things on a humorous light, it tells us that she drinks beer at Red Sox, at the, the stadium at Fenway. But secondly, I will note that we cannot write the legislation to, to work on health care when the government shut down because our technical assistance is not present, uh, arguing for opening as we begin to continue working on health care, just to say. Uh, I'll, I'll register my uh, respectful disagreement with that, and we'll keep talking. Thank you.